Hey, I'm Antonio Graceffo. This is Martial Arts Odyssey. Today we're in Manila in the Philippines with my very good friend and chief instructor, Master Frank Icocho. Master Frank, how are you today? I'm good. All right, today we're going to be learning about Philippine stick fighting. Now, Philippines is famous for a number of martial arts, the stick being the most important or let's say the most famous of the art, and you've got a number of names for that, don't you? Yeah. Arnis. This is Arnis or Kali. Kali. Or silat, silat. That is without the the stick, silat. And there is another one without using a stick with a small piece of metal. Okay, now in the Philippines, this is probably the only country that I've ever practiced in, or that I even know about, where people actually fight with the sticks. Now, a lot of martial arts, they practice with the sticks and they do all these movements. They don't really fight here in the Philippines. They actually fight now. In the Sea Games, which is the Asian Olympics, the Southeast Asian Olympics, they uh, they fight with the sticks. Correct. And the sticks are padded. Yes. Some are not. It, they are wearing a, a vest or safety gear. Okay. So they they wear something similar to uh, Taekwondo, or something. Not, not different. No, different. Not. Okay. It's uh, similar to Kendo armor vest. Okay. The body armor. But now I've been told that down in Cebu and some other places they're actually fighting with uh, without any protection or safety. Without any protection and they're using a wooden stick? This type of stick made of rattan. Made of rattan, okay. So there you have it. If you want to fight with sticks, come to the Philippines. Okay, so you're going to demonstrate a form for us today? We can, I can. Okay, and which, which form is this? This is Dissalon. Dissalon. The, the basic uh, form of Anyo in uh, this uh, uh, form. This is the basic form I developed. That is the full right. From this ready stance position, moving left foot facing an opponent. One hand on the right. right. After the block, the strikes come in whipping the Plus, a moving forward and a thrust and a thrust. Step forward, block and strike and this arc. Turn to the other side, block, whip, thrust, thrust, block. Like move I noticed a little bit about the Kung Tao form. Now, we started at that position and? We landed at this in the spot. Okay, so we start at one point and we're going to come back to that same point. Now, I also noticed your movement. Well, when we talk a lot about Taekwondo, for example, that they mostly move in a straight line. Right, but what's different about Kung Tao movement? We are moving on both combination of a straight parallel line to a circular motion. Okay, a circular line. And we have about six directions, is that right? Again, six attackers. Okay, we have point. six directions, six attackers. So basically, if you picture your body standing at the center of a compass, and you right. have your, your north, south, east, west, and then you have your 45 degree angles, and that, that should give us about six or eight directions. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Okay, and uh, the movements, when you went in each direction, you did the same set of movements, didn't you? That is the basic exercises to train students okay. about the posture and, uh, and proper stances and the balance of the body when executing a blocking and striking. And how many movements were in that form? Well, on, I only have around eight of okay. them. Only eight movements, but they're repeated. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Repetition. It is in the way to motivate or let the students memorize easily. Mm -hmm. There's an old expression that says, I'm not afraid, 
of the thousand kicks you practiced one time, I'm afraid of the one kick you practiced a thousand times. One, a two, a one, two, three, four. <laughs>